Hello and welcome to the second masterclass um, with uh, fantastic Riga Yurumala Academy. Uh, I'm happy to see the second student to, for today, Marta. Yeah. Hello. Hello, it's wonderful that you are here. Um, what are you going to play today? Um, I will play Bach, uh, first mm -hmm. Sonata, Fuga, yeah. and okay. uh, Tchaikovsky while in Concerto. Uh, Great. First movement. First movement. Great, I would like to start with Bach. I think that's mm -hmm. good for the beginning, right? Okay, please. If you like, um, you can play without the headphones. However, oh. it's better I for you. I think it's good. It's better. Okay. Thank you. 
wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Uh, thank you for your very, very musical playing. I like it a lot. And also what I said to, to the previous student, Arina, um, I really, really admire all of you to stand up today in front of audience and play because I know really exactly how challenging this time is now without regular lessons and without the normal daily rhythm. And uh, yeah, you are not going right now to, to the university, right? And uh, so it's very, very, it's different. It's just different. We have to adjust to it. And there is a lot of work to be done by yourself at home. So it's a good experience, but it can be also challenging. Um, so I would like to start from the beginning once more. Um, I like how you structure the theme of the fugue. It's it's a little bit developing to the, towards the middle and then a little bit closing. Yeah, could you present it once more? Just the very beginning, the theme. Exactly. Mm -hmm, exactly. So I would like to try, of course, it's not always possible with all the chords to try to find this shape of the theme whenever the theme comes. Yeah, so. So we go until. Yeah, and so on. Um, and also uh, the other thing is um, first we have the exposition. Yeah. Uh, where the theme comes through all the voices of the fugue, yeah? First, then... And then we have it... Um, and then the exposition closes and the... Uh, the actually, the new beginning is... Yeah, when it starts in the original tonation, but one octave higher. So can, we, can you think um, until this place, which is bar 14, as one big uh, phrase, which develops. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Start one, once more from the beginning and, and just try, let's try to see the, big, the bigger picture. Very good, very good. When you have chords, uh, I know that we have, we don't play like a pianist or the organ player, we can't press all of them, all of the notes together in the same time. We have to, un or unfortunately, we have to break the chords. But when you break them on the beat, then the feeling of the rhythm stays the same. So, pam, 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 and not before the beat, yeah? Not. Uh, because it's it's making the the rhythm and the actually the rhythm of the theme is not that clear anymore. Let's try to play them a little bit more compact and more uh, more the, on the on the main beat. Can you start from this place from from bar eleven directly? <laughs> And when it's, when it, I don't know, there are the E uh, strings that just whistle. You have to just try out the different ones. Or be careful that you don't touch with the third finger. Yeah, that you don't touch the E string. Once more in the same place and try really on the main beat. Yeah, 
much better, wonderful. And one more thing, the small legati, we need to also phrase them, so... Yeah, we, we can't play in Baroque really... Yeah, try to, to find those little, uh, little commas in between, yeah? Exactly, and until here we have long, long, long phrase, long bow, yeah? First kind of chapter, and then, yeah, we go on with the second one. Thank you. Until here, um, when we start uh, the part, um, uh, so third bar of this um, of the part where we started, bar sixteen. Um, for me, it's more important to hear the theme. I know that that's very interesting. Also, the uh, the, the second uh, voice, but. Um, Can you expose it a little bit more, yeah? And also with the same shape as the original theme. Pam, 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 pam. Yeah, very good. I just lost one C, but I think you will you notice it now that you actually when when I put your attention to it, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's not be too focused on the on the accompanying uh, voices. Maybe we try once more the same place. Very good, yeah, great. And here I liked how you play tam pam 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 exactly in the right rhythm. So you 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 get it. You break the chords on the beat, yeah, on the exact uh, time, not before the beat. Yeah, let's start right where we stopped. It was very good now. Very nice, yeah, and then completely new color. As you know, when the organist is playing and he just puts a completely different register, you know, different type of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the, of the sound. So you can um, finish with this very strong. <laughs> can go with completely different uh, different dynamics different color
Yeah, very good. One just tiny detail in the also legato. Can you uh, make also a little bit of the of, of the bowing um, yeah, uh, phrasing? Yeah, so tiny. I don't want to say diminuendo on each bowing, but abphrasian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> And also, um, not each chord, not every chord has the same um, weight, yeah, not the mm -hmm. same uh, importance. So you can e you can really, I know, I feel how musical you are. So you can just follow the direction that you feel you would like to do and make a little bit more, exaggerate a little bit more in the in the shape of the phrase, yeah, mm -hmm. because it's quite long uh, phrase with those uh, with those eight notes and chords under the legato and at some point it starts just he feeling heavy i think if you give it a little bit more direction it will be wonderful And then let yourself take some time between the yeah before the new things start. You can breathe in. It was really fantastic. Just go on like this. Beautiful. Um, just a little suggestion in this uh, 16th note. Yeah. <laughs> Try to not uh, emphasize every um, downbeat of every bar. I know that the the, um, the organ uh, notes, yeah, organ uh, organ note, organ or pedal uh, note mm -hmm. is coming there, and uh, we have to hear it that it's it's there. Yeah, that the harmony is changing, but um, not in every bar. You don't have to. Mm, exaggerate. So try to shape it a little bit uh, in a various way. Yeah. Let yourself a little bit more fantasy. Let's experiment now, you know, just play completely different as you are used to. And if it's too much or it, if it doesn't fit, we will find out another way. But um, try something else. I liked it very much. You know, probably you felt like you're exaggerating too much, but what comes through to the audience, it's, it's just right. It's really not too much. I liked it. So you can listen afterwards to the recording, how it sounds and um, decide if you take it or not. But mm -hmm. I think it was a good direction. So yeah, let's go on. Here 
I would like to uh, to um, emphasize a little bit of this uh, bitter harmony that is coming, yeah? Um, so, for example... <laughs> Take a little bit of time on it, yeah? Don't don't be too rushed. Uh, and uh, also on those big intervals that we don't have that many times here, just mm, mm, take a little bit also, a little bit of time. We don't play rubato in this music, but some things need to have certain weight, yeah? So, yeah. Once more from the same place. Okay, yeah, once more. And now when you play, I would like to, in the last bar, I would like you to hear the cadenza, but listen to the bass, uh, to the bass line. So. And follow the bass, follow the, the harmony that is changing. But let's start from the same place. Beautiful, very good. And then take time. Again, we change the register, yeah, at the organ. <laughs> Very good. Um, I would like to come a little bit uh, backwards uh, to the to the place. I loved how you phrased it. How how it's possible to hear the the polyphony in just uh, linear um, music? Actually, here it's beautiful. I would like to still encourage you to do a little bit more of that. To, to switch different uh, through, um, during uh, switch between the different voices more clear and change the color and dynamics a little bit more maybe it's just because we are online and it comes a little bit uh, mild but I think you can really go for it and make it uh, a little bit more clear for the audience mm -hmm. so the bar 64 yeah, yeah. one line and then in between we have this uh this interruptions of the soprano yeah mm -hmm. maybe directly from bar 67 
Yeah, exactly. And it needs also a little bit of time to make it um, hearable. <laughs> Yeah, and here uh, I wanted to ask also to start the legato with a little bit more of the yeah, phrasing. where you stopped, uh, we arrive and then take a little bit of time also. Um, yeah? Mm. Um, what I wanted to say before also, you notice that in the bar 77, when the tricky part comes, it really helps also to take it a little bit more broad, yeah? So don't yeah. just just take care not to rush and it's gonna be wonderful. You play really great. So whenever tricky part starts, we always tend to rush and to try to escape, but the opposite is usually helpful. So exactly. Try to to just relax more in this in this um, in this part. Um but we go on. Let's go on from bar 79 and try to just uh, you can loosen here a little bit of the energy and arrive in bar uh, in bar 80 and then start new so <laughs> to this huge climax here. Very good. Just um, try to find the chords where we have a lot of dissonance and expose them a little bit more. They are not all the same important, yeah? For example, this one needs really some some more intensity and, uh, and maybe also a little bit more time, yeah? And really just go in with with the hair yeah with a flat bow go into the string more um can we start uh, directly from this from this upbeat to 83 Before this, uh, this, uh, this dissonance we talked about, it will help also if you make the chord before it a little bit um, broader, yeah? So... Yeah? Um, just take your time, really. It's a huge moment and it's really... This is the climax of the fugue. Then later what comes is just orgel point and we go on yeah with a little improvisation but that's where where we arrived during the whole story yeah once more the upbeat to 83 
Yeah, fantastic. And the last chord I like when it's finishing just a millisecond only on the G. So. Yeah, so you don't hold both strings until the end. Just really the tiny last moment only G. Yeah, to to leave the the tonica. But wonderful, really great playing, and I I really enjoyed listening. Do you play also the whole sonata? Uh, I yeah, I play also adagio, adagio. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I I have been playing also Sicilian and Presto. Wonderful, yeah. yeah, it's great piece. It's really, and I find this fugue. It's one of the first fugues that people usually play because it's the shortest. But I find it actually mm -hmm. really difficult. It's it's yeah. really uncomfortable. Chacon is much easier than this, and apparently yeah. also mm -hmm. a major fugue, which I didn't play. It's uh, more comfortable, but this one is. Oh, mm -hmm. I find it quite challenging. So, congratulations, wonderful. <laughs> Let's go to Tchaikovsky now. Mm -hmm. Do you play the whole concerto also? Uh, no, only first movement. No, just first movement, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah, probably you will play later. Okay, it's also fantastic music. So I might interrupt you. I don't think I will hear the whole first movement, otherwise we'll not have time yeah, to yeah. work on it. So okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, until here first. We maybe we might we might go on, but let's work on the beginning first. Beautiful. Um, what I would like to suggest in the, for the very beginning, um, I know it's uh, it's kind of a cadenza where you are alone, 
but um, orchestra has a very long tutti before that and they are getting into some uh, into some rush and they are building up some tension and then the tension is lowering and actually there is then pianissimo just before you start yeah but still orchestra it's in uh, is in some certain tempo if you start all of a sudden twice slower it's not gonna be that much um, power. I mean, it's the whole the whole build up which orchestra did is gonna be just uh, lost. So I would suggest to connect more to what's happening in a tutti and start in this fast tempo, and then you can you can uh, use the the break, yeah, and uh, do whatever rubato you want in your cadenza. But but just first, very beginning. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. um, in the context of, of the whole piece, yeah, so... Because you are actually joining something that has been already happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try that. So you start in the tempo... And then you can take time... Exactly. And at the end of the phrase, we see ritenuto, right? Mm -hmm. And fermata on the A. So I think in order to be able to do it, to slow down and then take time, you need to have some reserve for it. So don't slow down too much before that. Yeah, I would really like to to be still in allegro moderato, even though you, you make rubato and you take time. Yeah, so... plan it a little bit more flexible don't 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 play it uh, too slow from the beginning on yeah wonderful Go on, go on. Fantastic. Um, I would like to encourage you to play a little bit lighter when, whenever it's possible. Of course, the first theme is very warm and very settled and, and it's, it's good that you are playing very uh, calm and it, it says singing, yeah? So... <laughs> That's very nice. Then when we have those, the, the dotted um, rhythm and the little staccato on the last note, so... You can also use a little bit of ago gig, go forward and then a little bit backwards and uh, use this motif, this rhythm to play a little bit lighter, more airy, so... Tchaikovsky wrote 
a lot of ballets. So um, in his music, there is always this lightness also. It's not only heavy Russian uh, romantic playing, but um, it's also very elegant. So um, let's try to find both whenever it's possible. Okay. Um, I would say once more from, from the theme, from Moderato Assai. Yeah, here for example, look, sorry for interrupting, you can also use this. Yeah, a little bit of this light gesture. So also the beginning. And then through the pose, the music is continuing. Yeah, very good, sorry. Um, uh, when there is Espressivo in 44, you know, actually it's the first time he writes Espressivo. Before that we had only Dolce. So what does it mean? You know, which kind of intensity do we look for? I think Espressivo is always something that comes from the inside. Like it's, it's somehow in, in your inside should be kind of forte, even, even though we play mezzo forte. So, so try to, try to imagine that, that there is some power that it's being held and it can't really be released yet, but, um, but it's boiling, yeah? So it's not just light and sweet and... It's more like... Yeah, try to find some different kind of sound. Um, let's start from... Bar 41. Yeah, very good. Beautiful. Beautiful. One more, just last suggestion for this, the same place. Um, I would like to hear the last E note in this, uh, in this bar with vibrato. Just really enjoy this, this, uh, this melody and the harmony. I think that the quality of the really brilliant playing is in those very very tiny details and especially the last notes under the legato where we you tend to think already forward and think what's coming and we should really really listen actively to what's happening right now so enjoy every every of those small notes too they are important and once more this place with espressivo it's quite insisting because it's repeating itself so And then it arrives to the new uh, tonation, yeah? But when it's insisting for the second time, 
make a little bit more statement, yeah? A little bit different. Yeah. Once more the same place. Just try to uh, be careful not to slow down too early, only when, when it's written. Ben sostenuto il tempo, yeah? But before that, uh, this repetitive thing. <laughs> slow down in the bar it could actually go a little bit forward so you can have room to slow down in bar 50 afterwards yeah so try try to plan it a little bit more um, more economical <laughs> um, wherever you you feel like it's good to start Sorry, I'm interrupting a lot, but there are so many details that he wrote and small di dynamics also that are uh, going into the middle of the legato. And um, I see you making it very well with the right hand, but not always with the left hand. So for example... Could you exaggerate more on this, on the, on the B, yeah? And also there are two motifs here. One motif we know already very well, this old motif. And then... And then... I would tell the first motif is just cozy and settled and warm and being at home while the second one it's something new and fresh and a little bit more like a little child playing and uh, it's more more movement in there so can you show a little bit more contrast between between those things and then really really more direction on the on the last uh, on the last uh, bit yeah Yeah, let's go on. I would like to listen to the second thing a little bit before we are done. I think the the most uh, the most uh, dangerous thing for the second uh, theme is that it might appear too slow. Mm -hmm. So just to check on the tempo, can you 
play the beginning of Moderato Assai once more, just to play. Yeah, and we will check if the whole movement has the same tempo. Okay, so one, two, three, and... I think, you know, when you play a little bit more fresh, like now, in, this, in the same tempo, you have much more room to make rubato, to slow down when something is important, for example... Yeah, but if you start too heavy and too slow, then we can't take any more time, because it's really then in eight and it's not in four. So actually, ideally, I would think in two here. I know it's beautiful melody and you want to sing, but you can also sing a little bit more with the movement in, 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 uh, inside of, of it, yeah? And you can also take time within the small uh, notes, within the sixteenths or eighths, yeah? They don't have to be metrical, like... So don't worry that it would, it would become sporty or automatic, I don't think so. Try to just use the, the color, vibrato and all the other things that we can use for espressivo and not the, not the slowdown for, for the espressivo. And um, exactly, also when the syncope comes... Uh, I know that once it's good to show it, it's a beautiful moment, but not twice after another, not, not twice the same, yeah? <laughs> then it's more important to show <laughs> the change of harmony. So once more, the, uh, the second theme. Okay, good. 
until here. Very good. Um, I loved uh, how musical you play. Beautiful. Um, it was very, very nice when you took time after... <laughs> this uh, pianissimo uh, I would like to ask you uh, even though you take time it's it fits perfectly in this place but then later you have to find a spot where you come back to the tempo to the pulse yeah so if you take time uh, maybe from here from When it starts growing back, could you push it a little bit forward? Then, then we f find the the original tempo in bar eighty-eight, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, when you continue, oh, my, probably I will interrupt you. But then, when you continue, um, <laughs> it's actually the the second bar of this phrase. It's just a little variation that is coming mm -hmm. down. It's not so important to to uh, emphasize every beginning of the legato, but we'll work on it. Just first, show me, please, this um, this uh, transition from eighty three into pianissimo. Here, uh, can you f just think within two bars here? Um, so don't disconnect every um, free, uh, ev every triola, yeah? <laughs> a little bit more semplice. It's mm -hmm. not such a not such an important bar, the bar ninety, yeah. But before it was much better. You can even awaken it a little bit more when when you are in the in this uh, place. You can really go a little bit forward and then at the forte you can always decide yeah if you want to again stretch it a little but i think you will just land in the right tempo if you if you let yourself go a little bit forward before mm -hmm. because we took a lot of time in pianissimo okay you want to try once more okay. pianissimo Exactly. Great. Until now, it was wonderful. Just um, small suggestion: you can take a little bit of time and and show the new uh, harmony in here. No one expects that it will suddenly be be, be this, yeah. time really here is a good moment for it <laughs> you want to start in uh, 93 directly from uh... your instinct here no up uh, up bow sorry it, 
has to be stronger when you arrive in the 95 in this on this mm -hmm. uh, G sharp, yeah. I think we are done, unfortunately, so I have to stop here, but it was really, really nice to work with you. Beautiful playing, really great, great, uh, well, well done and, and go on like this. I'm really, really curious uh, if I can maybe hear you at some point live in, in a real life and uh, hear your progress. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks a lot and take care. <laughs> Thank you.